And joining me now with reaction to my opening statement and much more is our good friend, former Republican congressman from California and the president's nominee for director of the U.S. Trade and Development Agency, Daryl Issa. Congressman, welcome back to Justice. Well, thanks for having me on, uh, Judge. And, you know, I, I want to just give your listeners, uh, viewers, a couple of numbers, because when you were going through that, that intro, it occurred to me that, first of all, only three times in 35 years has the full House held someone in contempt, the last one being Eric Holder. Right. Eric Holder was held in contempt after I subpoenaed and asked for documents and worked with the Department of Justice for 204 days and then he finally refused to give us any additional documents. At that point, we went another 48 days of trying to make agreements, asking to look at what is called in camera, asking to look at documents that he wouldn't give us but said he might give us. We said, well, let us see it and let's see if it's sufficient. Here we have Jerry Nadler, 19 days, over half of which he was on vacation, 19 days from the release of the report, and he does contempt. And the killer about this is his people were offered the opportunity to go down and look at the documents unredacted and decide, did they really need them? Did they need to somehow get, you know, secret uh, things that were done be on a grand jury? You know, what's amazing is the minority, the Republicans, sent down people, some of whom used to work for me. They looked at them, they read them, and then they advised their ranking member to vote no on contempt. Well, Jerry Nadler voted yes on what he's never seen. Well, and, the, you know, given the opportunity to go into that skiff and see that stuff, they don't want to see it, which leads anyone to the one conclusion that, that makes sense, and that is that this is all about chaos. This is all about creating a constitutional crisis. The only crisis in this country right now, uh, Congressman, is what's going on on the border, where people are, they say 96,000 uh, this month are coming in from the southern border in one month. That's double the size of the town that I grew up in. But what the difference between Eric Holder being held in contempt after, you know, you, you had the patience of 250 days, um, is that people were being killed with the guns from Fast and Furious. That was a that was a whole mess. And, you know, the drug cartels got the guns from law enforcement. It was sick. The whole thing was sick. Exactly. And in the end, I mean, you had every right to ask for that. These people can get what they want, but they're not interested in it. But let's talk about um, the chairman of oversight and reform right now he doesn't that's elijah cummings what is he doing i mean uh, right now we've got this uh, uh this other committee that's uh, try, jerry nather who's got a personal animus toward donald trump they i know this they've hated each other since from the new york days they have since uh, actually the 70s to go back that far I think, first of all, Jerry Nadler, who said on a train and was uh, was overheard saying he was going to impeach the president, yep. simply is trying to work backwards from impeachment. Uh, in the case of Elijah Cummings, uh, I still don't recognize all the things he's doing as similar to what he said when he was my ranking member. But I will say one thing, at least he understands that this kind of extreme and fast behavior is inappropriate. Uh, now, here's one of the interesting things, though, is when when you look at uh, Jerry Nadler's greatest offense, it was the indignity, if you will, of his saying that he and the other elected officials, people who should be accountable, including AOC, uh, that they're not going to uh, uh, they're not going to ask the questions. They're going to have unelected staff attorneys ask the question, something that hadn't happened since Watergate. That, to me, was unbelievable. And I was so happy that the attorney general said, I'll come down. I went to the Senate, but I'm not going to be cross-examined by, by staff yeah, by attorneys staff lawyers. when, That's in absurd. fact, the members are just trying to duck their responsibility. Well, and, you know, the Democrats are in a frenzy right now. I mean, how do you think that they, the people are looking at this? I mean, these people, after they get the Mueller report that they sold us, as this is going to prove that Donald Trump shouldn't be in the Oval, not one iota of collusion between the Trump campaign, and they violated all the rules, which I'll talk about later in the show. But, you know, now they want to continue this thing as if they're going to do more of an investigation than the bar is. American people aren't stupid. Are these people going to keep their jobs? When are they going to start working for us? 
Well, the fact is, this is a, uh, an investigation in search of a crime, which is exactly right. the opposite of every investigation that I ever did when, when I was heading the Oversight Committee. You, no, you normally have a valid accusation, a, a real belief in a crime, as you know, as a prosecutor and as a, uh, as a judge. You start off with a prima facie case. You start off with something that passes the sniff test, and then you investigate. In this case, when they ran out of it and it was time to dismiss, what they did was said, well, there must be a crime. Let's go get his tax records. Let's go after his kids. It's endless. I think the important thing, though, Judge, and what we all know now is that this is a purely political witch hunt, and for the president to, uh, to not stand his ground would be ir ir irrational. Right. And I'll give you an example. Sometime in the near future, against her best interest, Nancy Pelosi will probably hold a contempt for the full House uh, right. on, on this question. I'm hoping that the Department of Justice will say to every member of Congress, come down, read the unredacted yeah, uh, report. See what's there. So, so the ones that vote yes will be the ones that haven't read it, and the ones that vote no will vote no because they've seen it and they yeah. know for a fact there's no reason that these things have to be made public against the law and against tradition. Right. Congressman Darrell Issa, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, Janine. All right. Welcome to Waters World. I'm Jesse Waters. We begin with real news of the week. Democrats in the House Judiciary Committee voting to hold Attorney General William Barr in contempt of Congress for refusing to turn over the full unredacted Mueller report. By the way, they're declaring this a constitutional crisis. Listen. Ever wonder what a constitutional crisis looks like? Well, open your eyes. We are now in a constitutional crisis. President Trump appears to be heading toward a constitutional crisis. I saw this coming and mentioned the constitutional crisis. We're hovering on a constitutional crisis. We're in a constitutional conflict that's careening toward a crisis. Do you agree with uh, Congressman Nadler, Chairman Nadler, that, uh, that we're in a constitutional crisis? <laughs> All presidents refuse to hand things over to Congress, Democrat, Republican. I guess when Trump's president, then it becomes a crisis. 98% of the Mueller report has been released. The two percent that hasn't been is grand jury testimony, and it's against the law to release that. So Democrats are holding Barr in contempt for following the law. By the way, the left took a very different stance on it in 2012 when Republicans held Eric Holder in contempt for stonewalling the Fast and the Furious investigation. Watch. Instead of bringing job creating, creating uh, legislation to the floor, the transportation bill, uh, they are holding the Attorney General of the United States in contempt of Congress for doing his job. That is an outrageous abuse of the contempt power. What will happen when this Congress actually needs to use the contempt power for a legitimate purpose? Will anyone still recognize it? Every single Republican voted to hold the Attorney General in contempt over this crazy conspiracy theory. Tell the Republicans to stop this witch hunt now. It just looks like more of our broken politics and vicious fights now out in the open. A party in the Congress that does just about nothing to create jobs or to help people without jobs decided the best way to do their job is to shower the Obama administration with subpoenas. For a lot of people, this is Republican versus Democrat, and they say this is just theater. It amounts to nothing. I love that they called it a witch hunt. <laughs> Meanwhile, as Barr investigates the spying of the 2016 Trump campaign, former director of national intelligence, James Clapper, admitted that spying did occur. Was, was it spying? Well, it, yeah, I, I guess it mis meets the, defin the dictionary definition of, spy, of uh, surveillance or spying. Border Patrol officials sounding the alarm on the immigration crisis, calling apprehensions off the charts. The agency reportedly nabbing nearly 100,000 at the southern border in April, the highest in over a decade. The Department of Homeland Security now DNA testing families to prove their relationships since so many illegals are just bringing random kids with them across the border. Following April's huge job numbers and its near 50-year low unemployment rate, delusional 2020 Democrats are now trying to spin President Trump's hot economy claiming he doesn't deserve the credit, but that Obama does. Watch this. I love that Trump is taking credit for a recovery that started under Obama, but the substance of this, who is this economy 
going to work for. And we had a tax plan that was all about giving the wealthiest people more, more of a break. We've got to make sure that this is a shared recovery, because right now it definitely is not. Do you give President Trump the credit? I give our workers and our businesses the credit, Jake. So I think that we have had policies in place, starting with President Obama, that have aided that recovery. The economy is doing well. Uh, and I'm sure I don't have to give Trump any credit. I'm sure he will take all the credit that he wants. <laughs> I love how Democrats are saying that it's their economy, but it's not working for middle class Americans. And, and by the way, what specific policies did Obama enact that created the Trump ep economic boom? Let me know. Wages are up, fastest clip in 10 years. America lost manufacturing jobs under Obama and now have added nearly a half million under President Trump. Gas prices are lower on average. I could go on and on, but the American people see it. Look at the numbers. Trump's approval rating hitting its highest level since his inauguration. Recent Gallup poll showing at this point in his presidency, Trump edging out President Obama by two points, 46-44. Speaking of approval, Americans do not approve of socialism. A new Monmouth University poll shows only 10% have a positive view of socialism. That doesn't bode well for Bernie, who's falling behind Biden in the polls big time. Biden taking a 26-point lead in the Democratic field in the Real Clear Politics national average with 41%, compared to Sanders, only 15%. But you wouldn't know that by looking at the size of Biden's rallies. Here he is drawing a few hundred, hundred people in South Carolina. And that was actually one of his bigger crowds. As you can see, he averages between a few dozen to a few hundred, I mean, it's not even close to Trump's turnout. There only 75 people showed up at one Biden rally. Unbelievable. Democrats running out of original ideas also. They know they can't beat Trump in 2020. So now they're once again calling for impeachment. Watch. I'm concerned that if we don't impeach this president, he will get reelected. If we don't impeach him, he will say he has been vindicated. He will say the Democrats had an overwhelming majority in the House and they didn't take up impeachment. He will say that we had a constitutional duty to do it if it was there and we didn't. Finally, we found the Democrat who tells the truth. We can't beat him, so we have to impeach him. Meanwhile, Tiger Woods awarded the Presidential Medal of Freedom, hot off his triumphant win at the Masters last month. But instead of celebrating Woods' accomplishments, the media took a swing at the president. He gives this, um, this award, which was a hallowed award, maybe someday it will be one, again, um, uh, to, to people he wants to associate himself with. And so he likes golf. A critic could argue, uh, after watching all of this, that there might be uh, somewhat of an advertisement going on here, a TV ad going on here, and handing out this Presidential uh, Medal of Freedom to Tiger Woods. It is, in, in effect, publicizing one of the Trump golf courses uh, there in Dubai that uh, Tiger Woods had a, had a hand in. So Trump giving the Medal of Freedom to Tiger is corrupt. Um, I also, I, I thought the president was racist, and they're criticizing him for giving Tiger Woods the award. Unbelievable. And for the record, Woods is the fourth professional golfer awarded the nation's highest civilian honor, following Arnold Palmer, Jack Nicholas, and Charlie Sifford. 